Hello, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to Mule Creek um, for this uh, glorious occasion. Uh, I'm going to introduce uh, Brian, Chief Deputy Brian Holmes. He's going to come up and uh, give a speech. All right, thank you. All right, hey guys, good morning to you. Hey, a little better late than never, but I'm super, super excited that we were able to get some visitors in and uh, to uh, support you guys, recognize you guys, and uh, just the program in general, right? It's a fantastic program and uh, just super excited. But as uh, Jason indicated, my name is Brian Holmes. A lot of you guys recognize me, a lot of you guys know me. We've been around doing this business for a long time, right? So Chief Deputy Warden uh, here at Mule Creek, and so I'm, uh, and welcome to the visitors. Uh, that uh, Warden Cavello, he's off site today. So Warden Patrick Cavello, he's actually the warden here at Mule Creek, but I am covering in his absence. He, uh, I know he wanted to be here, uh, but you guys are stuck with me uh, this morning, all right? So, <clears throat> hey, so just uh, a little bit is I, be uh, I began my career in 1996, right? So I've been doing this around for a little while, hence the gray hair. And, uh, but I started my career at uh, CSP SAC, New Folsom. Then I transferred over here to Mule Creek in 2008. And over the years, I've seen many new programs develop within the Department of Corrections and Rehabilitation. If you were to tell me back then when I first started that California prisons would house dogs, incarcerated persons would train them, raise them, love them, and be their handlers and their trainers, that these dogs were actually going to live inside of our housing units, that they're actually going to live down below, as most of you, some of you guys know, inside the cells and up here inside the uh, day rooms. Um, and that they were going to graduate from the program and would be placed with children, um, our vets in need to support them, and some would even go on to become guide dogs for the blind. I would have thought you were crazy, but now look at us now. <clears throat> 10 or 11 canine arrived in Mule Creek with our first three puppies and started this program on Facility A, our Level 4 facility. The warden back then made a determination that if we were going to activate a dog program, what a better way to show that we're successful than the challenging population such as a Level 4 facility as you guys know. And we were successful. Several of our staff had their doubts about the dogs being on the yard, but with the help of dedication and the working relationships with Tender Loving Canine and our staff, we quickly were off running in the dog business. So fast forward eight years and here we are. The TLC dog program continues to thrive and has expanded into Facility C and Facility E. Even through challenging times, navigating and dealing with a little thing called COVID, uh, we still continue to be successful. Thank heavens that is behind us and we are all continuing to work together and push through those difficult times. With the partnership between Mule Creek, State Prison, Tender Loving Canine, and the dog trainers, I am pleased to say Mule Creek alone has graduated 69 dogs from Mule Creek State Prison in this program. So congratulations <laughs> to that. The incarcerated, uh, the incarcerated population has embraced this program, and I personally have seen a great benefit of creating normalization on these facilities and overall creating a better environment for staff and the offenders. I would like to thank our Mule Creek 10 or 11 canine handlers for their dedication and commitment to the program, the hours in which they spend here training with uh, our handlers, supporting them, and even the hours spending transporting the dogs in and out of these prison walls for their field trips and interaction on the outside. <clears throat> to the incarcerated individuals who have accepted the challenge in becoming a dog handler, hours of training and supporting these dogs 24 hours a day, I say thank you and please continue to keep up this great work. And to our great Mule Creek staff here for the work they do day in and day out, keeping our facilities safe, working with the canine programs, keeping program up and running the best we can, and keeping these programs up 
it takes everyone working together. On behalf of Warden Cavello and I, and the entire management team, I congratulate you guys today, recognize you guys today, and I please, um, please keep up this amazing work. You all have made me a believer today that dogs in prison really does work. Thank you. And at this time, I would like to uh, introduce the assistant uh, president, uh, Tony, at this time, if you'd come. So we'll just say good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're at. Everyone, this is great to be here today celebrating this milestone with each of you. I am Tony Blevins, Assistant Director, Guide Dogs of America, Tender Loving Canines. President and Director Russ Gettling could not make it today due to his scheduling conflicts, but sends his best to all the graduates, both two-legged and four-legged. I want to say a few words regarding Russ, who had the vision to expand a, on a school that provided 70 years of guide dogs only. His goal has always been about finding ways to put more highly trained service dogs into the hands of people that needed them, which is the mission of Guide Dogs of America, Tender Loving Canines. He then sought to research a program that would fit the GDA mold. And his vision, he found TLCAD, Tender Loving Canines Assistant Dogs. After seeing the rehabilitation these dogs provided to the incarcerated inmates and the rehabilitation these dogs provided to their handlers, he knew he had found a match. So he set out to merge TLCAD into GDA, forming GDA TLC, expanding our mission of providing more highly trained service dogs into the hands of people who needs them. So here we are today. Thank you, Russ. A few thank yous as we begin this program. I want to recognize a colleague and a friend with us today, Mr. Pearson, retired IAM and AW General Vice President and current GDA TLC Board of Directors member. Mr. Lee has had a long standing with the IAM and with GDA, if you will recognize Mr. Pearson. <laughs> a little history about Guide Dogs of America, which was founded in 1948 by the International Association of Machinists and Aerospace Workers, founded Guide Dogs of America, formerly known as International Guiding Eyes. The IEM and AW continue and GDA continue collaborating, inspiring, and fundraising to provide expertly matched service dogs to create true companionship. With that, I also want to express our gratitude to the warden of Mule Creek and his entire staff for their unwavering support and belief in the transformative power of this initiative. A special thank you goes to Covello Warden, Mule Creek State Prison, Mr. Holmes, Chief Deputy Warden, Mr. Campbell, Public Information Officer, Mr. Ross, Community Resource Manager, Mr. Perdinson, Associate Warden, ADA Coordinator. I also want to acknowledge the remarkable work of the GDA TLC trainers and the incarcerated trainers who dedicate their time and effort to molding these service dogs. A special thank you to Ms. Hunt. If you would raise your hand, GDA TLC Program <laughs> Director. Ms. Herman. Assistant Program Director. <laughs> Ms. Maples, Manager of Service Dog Programs. <laughs> Ms. Paris, Lead Service Dog Trainer. <laughs> so I always like to talk a little bit about what's behind the scene and what it takes to get us here. So I would like to talk about what takes place 
in the full GDA TLC village, as we call it. So I would like to thank the following to our wonderful puppy raisers. Well over a hundred of you, as we all say at the campus, you rock. Our very gracious sponsors and donors, thank you. Our 250 plus volunteers, you're, you are wonderful. Our kennel staff, you are simply the best. This crew keeps the kennels clean, our pups and dogs fed and socialized every day, 24-7, 365. Our vet department, our training department, our puppy development part department, our puppy coordinator, our nursery staff where it all begins, admissions, graduate staff, maintenance facilities, and a great marketing team, and the administrative staff. I am honored to be here today to acknowledge the incredible work at Mule Creek and in our service dog program. It is, it is a pleasure to witness this program's dedication and compassion which profoundly impacts the lives of individuals families and communities. This program is not just about training service dogs, it's about changing lives. The service dogs trained here go on to support veterans with PTSD and TBI, children with autism, and assist at facilities such as hospitals, schools, and courtrooms. The impact of these dogs is immeasurable. They offer comfort, support, and independence to those in need at no cost to the recipient. I am thrilled that GDA TLC is on pace to graduate 60 teams this year, a monumental achievement. This would not have been possible without the hard work, commitment, and kindness of everyone involved in this program. Through your hard work, you are not only training these dogs, but you are, are also contributing to the well-being of individuals, families, and communities in need. You are giving back to communities across America and Canada. Also at the GDA campus, we purpose breed, raise, and train guide dogs for the blind and visually impaired. Guide dogs give the visually impaired and blind the independence and mobility to become independent and free of needing a human guide or a white cane. These dogs are trained to navigate the busiest streets, such as those in New York City, Los Angeles, Texas, Ontario, Canada, Quebec, Canada. For our veterans, you are quite literally saving their lives. I understand this very well as I am a disabled veteran who proudly served four years in the United States Marine Corps and two years United States Marine Corps Reserve. I then served four years Army National Guard, Region Senior NCO, where I then enrolled in college and obtained a few degrees and then applied for Federal Army Officer School I graduated at the top of my class with honor grad. I remained there for approximately the next 10 years in the active, the reserve, and the guard. Status with helicopter aviation, heavy combat arms, and heavy armor commanding modern battlefield, battlefield tanks, while also employed at Fort Novacell, formerly Fort Rucker, in the helicopter maintenance test flight section performing helicopter maintenance test flights. After speaking with many of our veterans, they have told me that you're giving back to them the freedom they fought so hard for. Our veterans who return from proudly serving our countries in America and Canada can struggle to deal with PTSD and or traumatic brain injury. And they struggle because they can't fix what's wrong. These dogs you train provide comfort to our nation's veterans. Our veterans who cannot close their eyes to sleep in, at night in fear of rel reliving their traumatic event. They cannot get, leave their homes. They cannot even go grocery shopping. They cannot go to dinner at a restaurant or lead a productive life. 
Many veterans hide their PTSD and TBI wounds while trying to live their lives. These are what veterans call invisible wounds from combat or combat training and cause America to lose approximately 20 veterans every day to suicide according to the latest statistics. Our PTSD and TBI trained service dogs bring our veterans the comfort they need to get back out into the world and not just live their lives, but thrive to live. For our children with autism, you're giving them hope for the future. The treatment these dogs apply give children a chance at a more normal life. It helps the family handle daily tasks such as brushing their teeth, getting dressed in the morning, or going to school and engaging in class. The wave, the bow, the fist bump commands are just not performing tricks. They help make a child with autism make it a little bit easier to be a child. Because of your work, children have gone from being nonverbal to college graduates. But last but not least is our facility dogs. Each day, we're finding new avenues of placements for these incredible canines. Hospitals, fire departments, police departments, courthouses. Dogs you're training are comforting not just one individual, but again, families and communities. We have several of our incarcerated trainers who have been released on parole in two prisons, Mule, Mule Creek and RJD, who stated it was this program that kept them while incarcerated from seeking trouble or walking away from trouble. Knowing they could be removed from this program with most any infraction. One such gentleman is Mr. Lucas, who served time here at Mule Creek as an incarcerated inmate. Spoke at our campus guide dog and service dog graduation recently about his life. He has completed his bachelor's degree and is pursuing his master's degree in rehabilitation of for disabilities. He also has his own apartment, a full-time job as a lead dog, lead dog trainer at a well-known national pet store. He stated the lifelong impressions this very program taught him. Therefore, imagine a released inmate as a guest speaker at a Guide Dogs of America TLC graduation or a guest speaker at an IM conference or an IM convention. We believe in you and this program. In closing, I want to express my heartfelt appreciation to everyone involved. Your hard work is changing lives and making the world a better place. Thank you. All right. My name is Nicole Maples. I'm the manager of the service dog program. And I'm gonna go through and introduce and talk about each dog that graduated from Mule Creek from both our January team training class and our April team training class. First dog's Barlow. Um, Barlow graduated as an autism service dog and was matched with Laura. Laura is the mother of three beautiful children, Bryn, Brooklyn, and Christian. Her nine-year-old daughter, Bryn, and her eight-year-old daughter, Brooklyn, are both on the autism spectrum. She's committed to giving her daughters, sorry, she's committed to giving her daughters the help and support they need to thrive in their daily lives. A typical day presents many challenges in her family, and she was seeking support from an autism service dog to mitigate unwanted behaviors, create calm after emotional meltdowns, relieve symptoms of stress and anxiety, and to help socialize with peers. Barlow was trained by inmate Robert Mansfield, who is not here today because he just recently paroled since graduation. Um, and since he's not here, we, uh, we do have a word from Laura, though, so we're gonna show a quick word from her. Hi, Robert. My name is Laura. Um, I am the mother of uh, three children. 
two of which are on the autism spectrum. Um, I have Barlow here, and I just wanted to really thank you. Um, I can tell that you've put countless hours and uh, dedication into training him. He is the sweetest, most loving, and skilled puppy I have ever encountered. <laughs> Um, and my girls are really going to benefit from his calmness um, and the skills that he's going to be able to offer them um, to kind of bring down their anxiety and um, just help them be a part of this world. Um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart, truly. Uh, there's not enough words, but um, you have a gift, truly. Um, so thank you. All right, next up is Jackson. Jackson graduated as a veteran mobility service dog and was matched with Kim. Kim is a retired lieutenant colonel and wounded warrior who served in the Air Force for 21 years. During her service, Kim completed two combat tours in Iraq and two, a two-year-long deployments as the commander of the Force Support Squadrons in United Arab Emirates and Qatar. Kim was honorably retired in 2018 after being diagnosed with spinal cancer, likely caused by the burn pit fumes in Iraq. The surgery and subsequent radiation to treat her tumor left Kim with no feeling from her mid-chest down and nerve deficits, making it hard to walk and balance, which in turn made outings to busy, place, busy places difficult. With the help of her mobility service dog, she's leading a much more active life now. Jackson was trained by Robert Yim and help from Moises Tejeda. And we're going to invite Mr. Yim up now. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to thank everyone for showing up today and to thank everyone that helped put this all together. All of us dog trainers, we truly appreciate it. So today I'm up here getting this certificate for my second dog, Jackson. This certificate is more about him than me. And what I remember about Jackson is that he is cool, smart, and well-behaved. Also that he is really, really big. Jackson's training had first started in Southern California at Donovan State Prison and then he moved up here to Mill Creek. It was here when Parisian Maples asked me to help Jackson get to the finish line. We had to start on the basics and develop a bond, but he progressed fast and his training took off. There, we reshaped some behaviors, topped some new ones, had good times and bad times. Jackson was a goofball, but I am real proud of my boy. And today, this certificate is for him. I also want to thank Tejeda over there for all of that. Uh, for all the love and help he gave Jackson when I was swamped with all my college work. Um, so I see other dog programs on TV, but they don't show what happens behind the scenes. For everyone that knows, this program is hard. It takes dedication and grit. We train 24-7, rain or shine. But we do this because we want to. For me and many others, it is a way to make living amends and to give back. And there's people that think we don't deserve these dogs, and I know I don't. However, somebody... Somebody out there needs and deserves these dogs. And every dog I get, I will put my best training into them. Because it is my responsibility, and through my responsibility, I am able to contribute to society in a positive way. This restorative justice program is really one of the best things I've done in my life. And in giving back, I found confidence, self-worth, and with each new dog, I find purpose and meaning. There is a saying that we use in this program, there is no such thing as a bad dog. There is only bad trainers. So we can never blame the dog for anything. It's never their fault. This saying is so true, and it helps me in my own life, so I don't blame anyone or anything again for my actions. Speaking about my actions, in my life, I made some bad decisions. I came to prison when my daughters were one and two years old. They never had the chance for me to brush their hair, teach them things, play with them, and to watch them grow. This program and the dogs I train allowed me to get that piece of my heart back. I will always be grateful for that. My first dog keeper is here, and he was the one that helped me turn my bitter heart soft. I'm so happy that I got to see him today, 
But just like Jackson, I am proud that I played a part in their growth and transformation. Although they are not my kids, they are forever in my heart. I want to close by saying thank you all again, and thank you to the prison administration for allowing this graduation. To Jackson and Kim, I wish you guys the best. To Keeper and his family, I wish you guys all the best. And to my family and friends, I love you guys. To my daughters, Alina and Bella, I love and miss you. And um, this is Wyatt, and we will be up here next year. Thank you. All right. Now we have a few words from Kim. We'll show video. Okay, it's gonna be hard for me. I'm already starting to cry. Um, Robert and Dante, I just wanna say thank you so, so, so much. You have no idea what this means to me and for my life and how it's gonna be um, changing. Um, I know it's probably like a kid to you, so I'd like you to know that I'm gonna take such good care of him. And uh, he's going back to Illinois, where he's gonna live. I work full time at a rehab hospital. Um, he is my mobility dog, but I know everybody's very excited to have him there, and um, he's gonna touch many more lives than just mine. Um, he's gonna have two dog sisters, um, a couple of huskies to play with, and uh, we live on a big farm, so in his spare time, he's got plenty of places to run, and uh, I'm gonna take really, really good care of him, I promise. But um, you can see he's such a good boy, you guys know. Um, you know, just Already, it's already been life changing for me. We went to the beach the other day and I spend a lot of my time looking down because of my spinal cord injury. I can't feel my legs and I'm constantly looking down just to make sure I'm not tripping. I've broken my foot, I've sprained my ankle. And you know, the other day we went to the beach and I was just able to look at the beach and it was just amazing. I got up to go to the restroom all on my own before my husband would walk me there to make sure I'm okay. And, it's just like I have my freedom back. I can go do things and um, I'm just, I don't know how to express how very grateful I am to you. And um, I can't repay you, but just to say thank you very, very much. And I promise you, I will take very, very good care of him. So Jackson, can you wave? Can you wave? Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, next dog is Kuma. Kuma graduated as an autism service dog and was matched with Rosie. Rosie's the mom of an autistic 11-year-old named Clay. Clay was diagnosed at three years old. Clay's the youngest of five children and has been looking forward to an autism service dog. Kuma was trained by Carlos Aguirre, who is not here today. He recently transferred to fire camp, but we do have a video and some words to show from Rosie. Hey, my name's Rosie, and I just want to thank you so much for all that you guys do, uh, taking care of these puppies and training them. I, I never imagined that a dog would be able to do what these dogs can do, and it's really thankful. I'm very thankful to you. And um, for the man who raised Kuma, thank you so much. This is a dog that's going to change the life of my autistic daughter. And uh, it's already changed mine. Uh, I was a little bit afraid of big dogs. I had only have, had chihuahuas. Um, but I'm in love with this dog. And I'm in love with what I already see as the possibilities for my daughter. And for that, I'm going to be eternally grateful. And without you guys, uh, this wouldn't be possible. So thank you very, very much from the bottom of my heart. All right, next is Paxton. Paxton graduated as a hospital facility dog and was matched with Megan. Megan's been a certified child life specialist for six years. In her role as a facility dog handler, she works alongside her facility dog at Huntsville Hospital for Women and Children in their pediatric radiology and surgery areas at their outpatient pediatric pediatric therapy clinic and on their antepartum unit where pregnant women are on bed rest. In their work together, she and Paxton help decrease anxiety and meet specific medical and treatment goals. She enjoys working with her facility dog and meeting all the needs of their patients and families. Paxton was trained by Damon Pashilk, and I'm gonna invite him up now.
nervous. <clears throat> try to get through this. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I'm honored and excited to be up here today to share a little bit about my experience in the dog program and my journey with my buddy Paxton. Paxton was my third and my, my first purebred golden retriever. I can remember being told about the breed golden retrievers and how they tend to be very impulsive, extremely play driven and very sensitive dogs. Also that they come with a bit more of a low expectancy of wanting to do this type of work. In other words, most golden retrievers just want to play fetch, swim, and be pampered and spoiled. But let me tell you, Paxton is the exception to all that. Not that he doesn't want or like to be pampered and spoiled. I mean, who doesn't? But from day one, I knew that Paxton was destined for greatness. There are certain qualities or behaviors in the dogs that are given to us trainers that we look for and hope to observe in each of them that assure us that this dog wants to have a life of service. Paxton checked every box. Him and I spent about a year together, and he was a very eager learner and trained very well. He soon, he soon earned a nickname, as all the dogs I've trained do. His was Fancy Pants. You see, Paxton trots like a show pony when he walks. I can remember being stopped by people on the yard and being asked if I trained him to walk like that, and no, I hadn't. It was just part of his personality. Very proud and majestic looking whenever he moved. I had so much fun training him, being a golden, he loves contact with people, and this serves him well for what type of work he does now. Many a, many a day that I was feeling down, sad, or lonely, and fancy pants could always bring a smile to my face and change my mood. I know that he made numerous folks around here's day better after getting to pet him and then walking away smiling. Paxton's like a furry dose of Novocaine. In our program's mission statement, it says to transform lives through service dogs. I wonder if whoever wrote that statement, if they truly understand the effect that these words hold for the incarcerated trainer. It is parallel and equally life-changing to us as it is for the clients. Learning how to train dogs and why we train them, the things we do, awakened and developed some things in me. Things such as humanity, compassion, integrity, accountability, patience, lots of patience, and selflessness are just a short list of the transforming traits that developed within me without me even being fully aware of the change. That's how magical all this is. It created a passion within my heart to seriously pursue a career with this type of work once I parole. To see and hear how my commitment and dedication to each of the dogs that I get to train then goes out into somebody's world and transforms it for the better after doing the same to mine is awesome. And it completely motivates me to get better and better, both as a trainer and as a human being. This by far is the best thing that I've ever done in my life. I would like to thank both my instructors, Nicole Maples and Sonia Parisi, for con continu continuing to bring me these awesome dogs that are ready and willing to be trained. I'd also like to thank all the puppy raisers, the donors, and this institution for presenting the opportunity to allow the magic to happen. It does truly take a village. Most importantly, I'd like to thank my two biggest fans and supporters who are here today and sharing this moment with me, my mother, Pamela, and my big sister, Desiree. They have, <laughs> they have supported and encouraged me along my journey and transformation and share my newfound passion in training dogs for a life of service. My mother told me a while ago something that stuck with me, and it was that my present situation is not my destination, and that the best is yet to come. And how very true that statement is. I now realize that my biggest mistake in life has now been the first stepping stone to my greatest success. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> um, I lost my train of thought now. Um, okay, now we have a word from Megan. We'll show a short video. Hello, my name is Megan, and this is Paxton. And we just, I personally just wanted to come on and thank you guys so much for training Paxton and 
you all did an amazing job. Um, he is the smartest boy I've ever met and I'm so proud of him and all of that is thanks to you guys for putting your time and effort and passion into training him um, to be the best he can be. Um, yes, um, he will be working with pediatric patients um, at a children's hospital helping ease anxiety and meet um, treatment goals and so I'm so excited to bring him home and start working alongside him and just be able to witness firsthand the impact that he is going to make in our patients and families lives and that again is just all thanks to you for helping train him um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart um, for your time and um, dedication to training him. Uh, one more quick round of applause. Those were our four dogs that graduated at our team training class in January. All right, moving on to our April class. Uh, first dog up is Bindi. Bindi graduated as an autism service dog and was matched with Sarah. Sarah is a special education teacher turned full-time stay-at-home mom of three beautiful children with varying needs. Sarah and autism service dog Bindi work together as a team to benefit her five-year-old son. Bindi was trained by trainer Stephen Betty, and we're going to invite him up now. Hello everyone, uh, my very best regards to you all and to my mom, Laura, and my brother, Ricardo. I got assigned to GDA TLC June 2022 because I love dogs and it's a way for me to live amends, get back, and it's very rewarding and makes me feel good to have a part in helping transform lives through service dogs. Uh, I got Bendy May last year. She's just full of love and affection. Uh, nothing I can, if any, whenever, uh, I got frustrated or mad, it was my fault, not hers. And I had to look at myself. Uh, it was a very, uh, good experience training her. We, uh, bonded. I acclimated her to the environment and I just got lost in loving her. And, uh, I'm really happy where she ended up because she's got a lot of kids there to play with too. And, and, you know, there's siblings and, uh, she, She's got a lot of love and affection to give them, and I'm going to continue to train dogs and stay lost in their training them because I just love them. Thank you. And now we have a word from Sarah. We just wanted to say thank you to Stephen for all the love and dedication that you've put into Bindi. Um, just continually amazed at all the things that she can do. Um, our son is so excited for her to come home. We were able to FaceTime one time while I've been here, and she the first thing he asked was, does she know how to wave? And so she got to see, or my son Elliot got to see a wave, and he was so excited, and it was so sweet. Um, and little does he know, that's just one of the many things that she knows. So um, Bindi's going to change our son's life and change our life. All right, next up is Gizmo. Gizmo graduated as a veteran mobility service dog and was matched with William. William is a retired Army First Sergeant who served over 20 years of service. William suffers from PTSD due to military trauma that makes it difficult for him to function every day. And Gizmo was trained by trainer Arthur Henderson, and we're going to invite him up now. There you go. Hello, thank you uh, for everyone being here. My name is Arthur, as she just said, and I want to thank um, GDA TLC for accepting me into their dog training program and for the wonderful education I received and the great experiences I received in training uh, Gizmo, who is currently working and doing his very best to make life better for his new family. Um, Gizmo came to me with a lot of energy and drive, and 
he just loves to work. So we had a great time in every training session. And the one thing that I remember most about Gizmo is that he always seemed to think he could one up me on something. And I let him because I love this drive, so thank you. <laughs> All right, now we have a word from William. Arthur, this is uh, William. I am here with Gizmo, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for what all you have done for Gizmo and all the training. Uh, I, feel, I see that you have done a really good job with him, and he's really helping me out with my disability, and I just want to take this opportunity to thank you. Keep up the good work. All right, next up is Lainey. Lainey graduated as an autism service dog and was matched with Pollyanna. Pollyanna is the mom of three boys. Two of her boys are autistic. Lainey helps her 11-year-old son mitigate difficulties he experiences due to autism. Lainey helps with emotional regulation, social interactions, and allows her son to better navigate a world that can oftentimes be overwhelming. The family's excited, excited for the positive changes that Lainey brings. Lainey was trained by Ronald Prasad. I'm going to invite him up now. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I would like to uh, thank A.W. Pedersen for supporting and bringing this program to Mill Creek State Prison uh, and giving me the opportunity to be of service in someone's life through the service dogs. Thank you to everyone at Guide Dogs of America and Tender Loving Canines, but especially Ms. Parisi and Ms. Maples uh, for allowing me to be a part of something that will leave a lasting legacy in another person's life. Thank you to my family for always being supportive, encouraging, and loving me through my transformation, as well as doing my time with me through the worst times and now for the better. So when I first joined this program, I did it for all the selfish reasons you can think of, but as time went on, I truly started to internalize the mission statement, which is transforming lives through the partnership with service dogs, is when my reason for joining the program was no longer about me, but the recipient. Seeing the joy in past recipients as their lives were forever changed by this new addition to their family only made me want to give selflessly. The lasting hallmark that I want to leave through Laney is love, compassion, empathy, and the ability to be a positive change in someone's life. As Laney sits atop, of the Colorado Rockies and shines down. May she forever be that beacon to her new humans. Thank you. And now a word from Pollyanna. Oh, Trainer Prasad, I want to thank you for training Lainey with so much love and care. She's such a sweet girl and she's, I love you. <laughs> I can tell that she was very loved and she's going to be such a blessing. <laughs> to her family and just make such a change she already has. And I just thank you for making her so good at her cues and so loving and taking such good care of her. So best wishes to you and thank you for the gift of training Lainey for us. And one last dog we're gonna mention was Wisdom. Um, he graduated in April as an autism service dog and was matched with Meredith. Uh, Meredith and Wisdom work as a dedicated team in support of her five-year-old son, Noah. They assist Noah with daily challenges related to autism, including easing transitions, regulating anxiety by providing calming sensory input, as well as improving his social and communication skills. The whole family is so grateful for the amazing gift of Wisdom. Wisdom was trained down on Charlie Yard uh, by trainer Desmond Perry. And so now we're going to show a word from Meredith. Hi, Desmond. Uh, my name is Meredith. I just wanted to say thank you so much for all of your hard work and training Wisdom. I promise this is going to be his last graduation because he's never, <laughs> never coming back here again. We've bonded a ton, and I have just absolutely loved working with him. And I know that when I bring him home to my five-year-old son, he's going to um, change his life. One more big round of applause for all our January and April graduates. Good job. 
All right, now we're going to have some of our current participants and their dogs in training are going to, oh, sorry, I skipped one. Uh, let's have Stacy come up first. Um, I got excited. Uh, Stacy is an autism recipient of Dog Keeper, and she's here to talk about her experience with Keeper. Welcome, Stacy. Hello everyone, my name is Stacy. I am a mom to two autistic children. Um, about 14 months ago, Keeper came into our lives and stole our hearts. It feels so surreal to be here with Keeper where he was trained by Robert. Um, and Robert, you were right, he loves his naps. But he's always ready to work. I am grateful for the opportunity to speak about all the amazing work Keeper has done over this past year. At the age of four, my son Brandon was diagnosed with autism and shortly after with severe anxiety and fears. For many years, Brandon isolated himself from the world around him. Social gatherings were very challenging and overstimulating. Changes in his routine were triggering and overwhelming. We couldn't even sing happy birthday to him. As he got older, his anxiety escalated and he started self-harming. We provided every support possible, but we felt defeated. Until, Keeper at the, until we saw Keeper and we saw the light at the end of the tunnel. Keeper has given Brandon so much confidence and reassurance. Brandon is now thriving. He is an honor roll student and he is a positive role model to his classmates. He is no longer afraid to step out of his bubble and is even learning how to play the electric guitar. Brandon and Keeper have bounded in a way that I couldn't even imagine. I am so proud of them. Keeper has been such a blessing. He truly is a keeper, right? <laughs> Thank you to all the trainers for all your hard work and dedication. It doesn't go unseen. I especially want to thank Robert. Give me a second. <laughs> um, for your dedication and hard work for everything that you have put into Keeper. I know it must have been hard to say goodbye to him, so I am happy to be here and reunite you guys, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart for putting in all that effort. My family thanks you, and you have helped made a better life for my son. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to invite um, some participants and current dogs in training to do a little demonstration of what they do with the dogs here. Hey, I'm really nervous. Um, we didn't practice this so that it would be more authentic. Um, what we want to talk about is, is show you guys some of the training that we do. Um, so when we train our dogs, we, like, we use positive reinforcement so that our dogs love what they're doing. Um, we try not to correct them and we will let them make good choices. Um, so we get several things through our self, um, through our positive reinforcement. Um, besides the dog developing um, self-control, but we build this positive relationship um, so that when they go out with their client, then when they have that team and that relationship shows up, and because we're asking them not to be dogs, um, so when they meet somebody, they don't get to run up and sniff them and lick them and um or see a cat chase a squirrel um you know be regular dogs and they got to work um so we try to everything we do we have fun doing it and so we're going to show you some of that um and we're going to start with uh, mario and Dee. Dee.
Both of you. It's like one of the most important things we teach our dogs is, uh, is we're constantly working on impulse control. Like in a real life, a service dog needs to ignore many distractions. So he was going to come up and put her on a mat. Let me grab the mat. Like I said, we didn't practice. Put her on a mat. Yeah. And hopefully she's just going to stay there and stay relaxed and they're going to demonstrate some nudge. This is Jason and River. River's one of our golden retrievers. Um, nudge, we call it an interrupter. Um, River will demonstrate on Mario. He'll push his nose into his outside of his upper thigh or whatever indicated body part until the handler gives a cue or he would pet him. So usually once the dog goes home with the client, um, he's taught to recognize uh, a physical cue or something the client would do. Um, an example that we were told, we didn't get to see it, but we, there was a client that sky watched. So it's like a premise or something that would happen before um, whatever kind of episode he would have. And you teach, once the dog knows nudge, you can pair it with that. And sometimes it's like with a little bit of force, and so you feel it, and if you're having a moment or something like that, and the dog comes and knows you, it, um, it lets you know, like, hey, man, I'm here. I'm also going to do a hug. Hugs one of our social cues, and it also shows you how much you appreciate him being there for you. Um, so we try to put duration on the hug, so the dog will stay there um, until you release him. Now we're going to have Damon with Adora, another golden retriever. He's going to show belly up. Um, we use belly up for uh, mostly cooperative care. Cooperative care. Um, when we teach it, we used to put a – go in the middle, Damon, so the camera can see you. So we teach it with duration. Um, she enjoys doing it. It makes like vet exams less stressful because now she gets to participate. Um, we use this to do her nails. Um, we can put booties on her. We, when we teach it, when he's taught it to her, she'll do it on elevated surfaces. She'll do it on tables, um, on a bench, on an ottoman. If you have problems bending over or getting down on the ground, um, you can put her on something.
she loves this. We use this to brush your teeth and um, clean their ears, practice exams, brushing them out. Um, we're going to demonstrate wave. Wave is our social cue. Um, it's another one we teach that and fist bump. Um, like we try to stay away from from the the shake. Anytime nails would inter, uh, interact with skin. Uh, Wave is real handy when a client is maybe feeling the pressure of interacting with somebody because people always want to come up and pet your dog. They see the dog um, and they don't realize that it's, uh, it's working. And like they don't come up and ask you, hey man, can I pet your wheelchair? Um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but from what we understand, like you can use that, like. Can I pet your dog? You just have the dog wave and then move about your business. Frank and Izzy. You guys seen Izzy already. Um, he's going to show some hold. Hold's one of our, it's a foundation for all the retrievals. Uh, when he teases your hold, he teaches her with different objects, um, different objects in different places for different durations. She has to be able to hold uh, cloth, metal, plastic, rubber, anything. You gotta, when you show it to her, she can't stop and take the time to sniff it and lick it and, and figure out what it is. She just has to grab it automatically. Um, and then the hold also, it has to stand on its own. All our behaviors have to stand on their own. And especially with holds, she'll, do, she'll hold something and do any other cue that she knows. And you can see like by her enthusiasm, she don't have to do this, she wants to do this. And this is where that relationship comes in. So as a hold, um, if you have like mobility issues, you have problems bending over, or if you drop something accidentally or even intentionally where she can pick it up, and even like autism placement, um, they use it for modeling behavior. So if you have a child that, that really doesn't understand, you can't go tell them to pick stuff up and put it away. Um, nice. Matt and Anna, and Frank. Frank's got Gretel. Um, Matt's gonna do some snuggles. And Frank's gonna do lap. Or Gretel's gonna do the lap. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So snuggle, her weight and warmth provide calming pressure and a grounding effect. Um, it can help slow breathing and heart rate. It can be used during a panic attack, a disassociative episode, flashbacks, or sensory overload. Um, either one. Um, so snuggles for deep pressure therapy. Um, you, can for, you can use it for conditions that involve muscular or nerve pain. But dogs that naturally love human contact, um, they make this much easier because they just, they, again, the relationship. And like all our dogs, they're, they're here for training. So they're all at different, different spots in their training. Some of them are, are, will be leaving soon. She'll be leaving here in a few weeks. And like Robert was saying, like, it's not always easy. Um, 
you have to get this dog to love to do this stuff. It's not hard, but it takes a lot of patience. On the floor is Clarence. Let me introduce you. Like I said, they're all at different levels in their training. Um, and like this room, it's a big distraction for the dogs. And being patient with them and getting that success. And then we do it over and over and over. It's repetition and exposure to different environments. Um, it strengthens the behavior. So by the time you get it, hopefully it's a fluent behavior. Snuggle actually has five positions. It's, it's that one right there laying down on both sides and sitting up on both sides and then sitting Indian style or with your legs crossed. Culturally inappropriate. <laughs> My bad. He's Indian. Thanks, guys. Good demonstration. Uh, we got Jacob and Nickel. Oh, wait a minute. I'm missing a card. Mo and Zach. Come on. Yeah, you guys can come together. Yep, yep. Mo's going to demonstrate stand. Um, you think stand's like a real simple behavior. The dog just has to break to sit. But there's actually a lot into it. When they stand, they need to stand in position and then stay in position. And Zach's a newer dog. And so where he's at, in this, he's going to show you a stand that it's, it's not fluent. So he's going to work the dog through it. Um, stand is more than just standing up. Uh, Mo teaches him to stay in position. And this is important. Let's say if you're a mobility client uh, and Zach is wearing a mobility harness, he can't stand up and take two or three steps because then he's going to pull you off balance. Um, so mobility support helps people who are limited in their physical abilities, limited range of motion, strength, or balance. This is Jacob with Nickel. Jacob's going to do some under, unders. You should go under any, any indicated object, like a table, a bench. Um, here, you're, we're using a chair. Uh, the way the behavior looks is that she goes under and tucks so that she's out of the way. But she, he should still be able to see her face. Um, under is really important because the dog, dog needs to be out of the way as much as possible. Uh, under ADA law, for a service dog to have public access, um, she needs to be out of the way as much as possible. Um, our goal is for the dog to be invisible. Yep. And he's gonna do leash. Nice. And now we have Alex and Earl, our other golden. We couldn't leave him out.
and hopefully we're just going to give an example of of a dog that struggles with some impulse um partly because he's a golden um he loves people loves attention and so just teaching him to walk and stay engaged with his handler so that he ignores everything in the environment is a lot of work That's Michael in the chair. Like you could literally see the energy in Earl. And I don't, it don't look like much, but what he's doing is just he's letting Earl make the choice and hopefully a good choice and giving him time to figure it out. Oh, boy. Man, that's what we got. Thanks, guys. Hi, Mom. Invite Emily up. Emily uh, is a recipient that has had a facility dog, Preston, that was trained at Mule Creek, and she's gonna come talk about Preston's career. Welcome, Emily. Well, thank you again for the opportunity to be here today. I was a graduate exactly six years ago. We graduated on May 14th of 2018, and Preston was one of the very first dogs who arrived here at Mule Creek. And so I know a few people still remember him, and I know you've heard a lot of really great stories and information from our different individuals that just recently received their service dogs, but I wanted to provide you a little bit of information about what your dogs do over the course of their career. Preston just recently retired after six years of service, uh, but it's a great opportunity to tell you a little bit more about what Preston's career looked like and be able to show a few photos of where he's been since he left Mule Creek. So these first photos here do showcase that Preston was one of those first three dogs. He graduated about six years ago with Stuart, Amador, and Jackson. And Preston, when we left in 2016, I had no idea what the future held for us. I knew that we were going to work for the Air Force. He went to work for the Sexual Assault Prevention and Response Office, but I had no idea the depths in which he would actually impact many, many lives over the course of his career. Uh, this first photo here does showcase that he was involved in a couple different videos. So he had a feature video when we first arrived at Vandenberg to tell everybody about what his work was and what his story was. He did get a video as well about a year later and a photo shoot that earned him the right to be the Airman of the Week for the Air Force. So out of all the airmen, uh, both our civilians and our four-legged, he was the individual that was voted uh, Airman of the Week. So I think once he ended up uh, getting his winning time, I think he had about 60,000 likes on his photo. So he was a pretty big deal and a lot of people knew Preston. 
Uh, the next photos uh, do showcase some of the work that day in a life of a facility dog. So usually it's really easy to explain to people what does an autism service dog do? What does a veteran service dog do? But it gets a little bit harder when we start talking about what does a facility dog do because it is so different. And so these are a few photos that do showcase a little bit about what Preston did over the course of his career. Every single day looked different. There was never a day that looked exactly the same. He did everything from going into trainings with me. Uh, he also worked with clients. He was able to attend um, investigations, be in the courtroom, be able to provide that direct support to different individuals. And this was really important, especially for our military population, not only for um, individuals coming into the Sexual Assault Prevention and Response Office, but many of those individuals were leaving their families for the first time, returning back from deployments. And it was really difficult for me as a professional, I wasn't able to give my clients hugs or be able to provide any type of uh, physical touch for them. I have all of the degrees, all of the training, but there was always something missing. And that's something where Preston came in. He was able to utilize all of the commands that you've all trained him. Uh, he loved snuggle. He loved giving his high fives. He utilized all of those really on a daily basis. So this next slide here is going to give you just a couple more pictures about Preston. That one on the bottom is one from his photo shoot. It says court in session. Uh, but really, over the course of his career, he was able to serve thousands of individuals. There are so many people out there. As you talk to individuals out there at uh, Vandenberg, where he did work, that have memories of Preston, whether it was they were having a hard day, maybe they were having an opportunity where they were coming into the office. He was that bridge that was created to take the barrier away for individuals to be able to come in and speak with our office and be able to receive support. Uh, this next slide here is a few more pictures from his photo shoots. So not only did he receive recognition from the military, he also received recognition from our local community as well. He was recognized by the local Rape Crisis and Child Protection Center for some of the work that he did in the local community. And then also with the Sexual Assault Prevention and Response Program being worldwide, he was able to help be an ambassador for that program to teach people about the services and resources that we do offer. Uh, these next pictures here do show just a few things that, that he was doing, his outreach events. He planted pinwheels for Child Abuse Awareness Month. The very bottom corner does showcase kind of his new life now as a retired pup. I know you guys all know the dogs go through a lot of work to be able to work during their career, but now he lives pretty close to the ocean, so most days you can find him running on the beach uh, after hours and being able to just uh, really be a dog and enjoy all the great work that he's had over the course of his career and kind of live his second life now after he's fully retired from his work. And then lastly, I uh, just wanted to say, you know, I know that everybody really knows these dogs make people smile. It doesn't matter if someone was having a really hard day. Um, a lot of times in my office, I would meet people on, you know, sometimes one of the worst days of their life. And just the ability to connect and immediately have somebody looking back at you smiling brings that endorphins to the individuals coming in the doors and being able to have somebody to support. So it's always wonderful to know how many people Preston made smile. And uh, nobody ever knew who I was. I was just the lady on the other end of the leash uh, for Preston. And immediately when you would walk into a room, people would start to smile. People would get really excited to hear that you were there and that Preston was there. And it was great, especially in a military community where people can't always have their families available to them. And so Preston was able to attend graduations for people, uh, be able to be there for promotions, different big life experiences. In the absence of having family members, he was able to be a part of many military member's journey outside of his work in the office. So this last portion here, I just want to say thank you. I know that it takes a lot of work. Uh, when I left here in 2016, I had no dog handling experience at all, or 2018, no dog handling experience. I had two misbehaved golden retrievers, um, all the stories about the goldens doing all the crazy stuff. Uh, that was the only experience I ever had. And so the thought of taking a dog into the work center, especially in a very high stakes environment, in the military environment, there was a lot of uh, stress and anxiety for me personally 
wondering would I have the skills that I needed. And I quickly realized I really didn't need the skills. Preston had the skills and I just had to be along for the ride to continue to reinforce them. So thank you again for the work that you all do. Um, the motto of the Air Force is service before self, excellence in all we do. And Preston, coming from this program, it really resonates in all of the stories that you have told here is being able to say that was exactly what he carried forward with him during his career, his military career. Um, he was all about service before self and excellence in all that he does. And so thank you again on behalf of the Vandenberg program for the work that you all did to prepare Preston. And I will continue to take amazing care of him during his retired life. And he will enjoy snacks, beach running, and all the things all these dogs deserve. So thank you. All right, good afternoon. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jamie Hunt, and I am the Director of Programs at Guide Dogs of America Tender Loving Canines. Uh, first, I would like to thank the prison staff for supporting the GDA TLC program. Uh, you know, as we've grown significantly over the last couple of years, um, they're always open into listening to our needs and collaborating with us, and we really appreciate that, so thank you. And I'd also like to give a shout out to Jason Ross, the CRM. Uh, thank you so much, Jason. Uh, we appreciate all of your help and support and for taking all of my crazy phone calls, so thank you. And next, we want to thank each and every one of the incarcerated trainers. You know, whether your dog is still in training, uh, it's graduated, or maybe even switched tracks to become a guide dog, you've all played an important role in making these service dog teams successful, and we are super proud of you. I also want to recognize the hard work for those of you that may have worked with a dog that has been career changed. These are never easy decisions for any of us, and GDA TLC prides itself on ensuring that all of the dogs that we place have suitable temperaments and a willingness to work to make these long-lasting matches. So even though a dog gets career changed, know that you have made a difference. That dog will still go on and touch other lives. For those of you who don't know, it, uh, being any type of service dog is really hard, and only about 40% of the dogs that we put out go on to make it on to go to a recipient. You know, I'm always touched by the statements that I hear from the incarcerated trainers in our programs, both here and at RJD, to hear how this program has created an opportunity to not only give back to society, but to teach those valuable skills like communication, empathy, trust, and patience. And everyone knows that a snuggle from any one of our dogs always puts a smile on your face. Thank you to Stacy and Keeper and Emily and Preston for traveling to share your stories. It's always wonderful for the incarcerated trainers and staff here to see their commitment to these beautiful matches. Finally, I would like to thank the GDA TLC staff, Mrs. Maples and Ms. Parisi, uh, for all of your hard work and dedication to the program. Let's please give them both a big round of applause. So we thank everybody for joining us here today. We are super excited to return to celebrate all of your successes and we look forward to continuing to do these graduations in the future. Uh, we hope that you enjoyed hearing from the two recipients here today and ins are inspired by seeing the differences that you guys have made in their lives. You all should be very proud of all the work that you do. Congratulations and thank you everybody for joining us.